a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. Verbum Domini. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world, and the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit 
is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. Verbum Domini Because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are they who have not seen me, but still believe. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Dominus Fabiscum, Etum Spiritus Tuum, Lexia Sancti Evangelii Secundum Johannem, Gloria Tibi Domine. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to them, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. Verbum Domini. Today is Divine Mercy Sunday, and the network will televise uh, the celebration of Divine Mercy from Stockbridge, Massachusetts, up at the shrine there. And today after Mass, uh, we'll have, as far as we can, televise a a sung chaplet, Divine Mercy chaplet. But it is a a day where the Church grants a plenary indulgence, the complete remission of the temporal punishment due to sin, the forgiveness of sins. under the usual conditions of prayer for the Holy Father, detachment from sin, <clears throat> and, uh, and to celebrate this day, we can, if your parish has 
uh, celebrations at the three o'clock hour to participate in those with the image to pray the chaplet. Or if your parish doesn't have it, you can pray before the Blessed Sacrament, pray in Our Father in a creed and some prayer for the mercy to venerate the mercy of Jesus, like merciful Jesus, I trust in you. Some prayer uh, asking for the mercy of God or even if you're homebound to take you know, some moment, hopefully at the three o'clock hour to meditate upon God's mercy. If you have the image of the divine mercy uh, to venerate that image and prayers for the Holy Father. In the diary of Sister Faustina, Jesus asked her, ask her for the celebration of this feast. And we have the image of the divine mercy that was revealed to Sister or Saint Faustina. And we see Jesus uh, stepping for, forward towards us, an expression of God's love and outpouring of mercy towards us. We see the, the rays of the, the pale ray, the red ray, symbolizing the blood poured out for us for the life of souls, Jesus tells her in the diary. The light ray represents uh, waters of baptism, this justification, a righteousness that he offers us. Uh, there's the celebration of the feast that he asked for in the diary, uh, Divine Mercy Sunday, the second Sunday of Easter, the recitation of the chaplet, which he uh, says will, you know, many graces of conversion of sinners will be given when one prays this chaplet. And then there's the hour of mercy at three o'clock when Jesus died on the cross. And even a recommended prayer of, O oh, blood and water which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy, I trust in you. To somehow, every day, we could even at three o'clock venerate and make offer a prayer asking for the mercy of God upon us. So it's, the church has instituted this feast officially and it's, it's broad, I think, in many ways in its celebration and it's typical of Jesus, you know, to open the door a little bit for him. And he's taking that step towards us, as we see uh, in, the, in the image itself. Today, uh, the apostles are in the upper room, first day of the week, uh, Sunday, you know, the day of the resurrection. They're there, caught up in their fear, and Jesus passes through the dock's door, stands in their midst, and says, peace be with you. And this is what Jesus offers us, a peace that's not rooted in the world. You know, they have, it's a time of great tension. It's be a time of persecution. You know, in 70 AD, Jerusalem will be sacked by the Romans. And so it's a very tumultuous time. It's not a time of peace in a worldly sense. But he offers us this peace through the forgiveness of sins, through his mercy poured out upon us, to be made righteous, that we can have his peace, we can have his Holy Spirit. And we can say this is, in a sense, the fullness of his mission, to give us that peace, that restoration of this peace that we lost due to sin. And this is what mercy does for us. You know, mercy is, John Paul II said so eloquently, is love's second name, that it it's that love that reaches out to us, that love of God for us is expressed in mercy, the forgiveness of sin. And that it's this, John Paul described it as, as a restoring to value, a lifting us up to being a child of God, a dignity of God that doesn't humiliate us, but that mercy overcomes evil. That that's God's answer to the evil in the world that he through his mercy he's going to somehow draw good out of all the evil in the world that through the forgiveness of sins that we can be converted and come to know him in a, a deeper way you know the catechism speaks of that you know the there are no in paragraph 1864 there are no limits to the mercy of God, but anyone who deliberately refuses to accept his mercy by repenting rejects the forgiveness of his sins and the salvation offered by the Holy Spirit. So we're the only ones that can limit it by refusing to turn from evil, by refusing to repent and believe in the good news. 
that's the only way that that this restoration to value, this, this restoring of our dignity cannot happen. If the prodigal son stays in the far off land, he needs to come back to the father's house. And even that is by God's grace, by his mercy, that enables that, that calls us to himself. But God's mercy prevails over all our sins. You know, especially in the work of the sacrament of reconciliation, of confess, confession. You know, today, Jesus appears to them, breathes on them, gives them the Holy Spirit, and says, whose sins you forgive are forgiven, and whose sins you retain are retained. That this is the expression of why he died and rose from the dead is the forgiveness of sins, and that's poured upon us in the sacrament of confession that we can go with any sin. And whatever we repent of, God promises us this forgiveness. If we recognize it, admit it, bring it to the priest, he will forgive us. In the diary, there's the most beautiful uh, passages about God's love for us and his mercy. He tells St. Faustina, he says, the greatest sinners place their trust in my mercy they have the right before others to trust in the abyss of my mercy. My daughter, write about my mercy towards tormented souls, souls that make an appeal to my mercy delight me. To such souls I grant even more graces than they ask. I cannot punish even the greatest sinner if he makes an appeal to my compassion. But on the contrary, I justify him in my unfathomable and inscrutable mercy. In another place he would say, write that I am more generous towards sinners than toward the just. It was for their sake that I came down from heaven. It was for their sake that my blood was spilled. Let them not fear to approach me. They are most in need of my mercy. It's the most encouraging passages and I, I would hope especially anybody watching this uh, mass or hearing this message that they be absolutely convicted that there is nothing that a person cannot be forgiven of if they repent. And as Catholics we go to confession and just have this outpouring of grace upon us. And today Jesus shows the disciples and then Thomas isn't there, his, his glorified wounds and, and even again, you know, he appears to assure Thomas of this forgiveness. That if we, if we don't believe his words, Jesus says in the diary, believe my wounds. If you don't believe my words about forgiveness, believe my wounds. Believe the passion that I endured for you. Is that not enough? Is that not enough? The death of the Son of God for us to forgive us our sins, to give us new life. That's what he wants to pour upon us. That's the expression of God's love for us as mercy, the forgiveness of sins. May we today especially avail ourselves to that mercy, to admit our, our sins and weaknesses and failings, and to be restored to the full dignity of the children of God.